Hey everyone, it's George Kroos. Welcome back to a month and review of the Innovators Mindset podcast. And I hope you're having um, a good day, good time, maybe some time just to reflect, relax. I know September has been a really tumultuous month for people all over the world. And so I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're well. And uh, one of the reasons I love doing this podcast is I hope that uh, through the stories of my guests, and sometimes hopefully even myself, uh, we can inspire you uh, to, to do some really incredible work and really kind of think about the interactions that we have every single day. And I actually just finished a podcast uh, with someone. And it was amazing because I had no clue. But he had shared that a lot of stuff that he's doing today started uh, when he connected with me. And what a great compliment because I didn't know that I, I had no clue. And I know that I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I can tell you sometimes that I've maybe had interactions with people that they weren't motivated after talking to me and uh, maybe didn't go on to do stuff because of me. And I, I, I would love to say that's never happened, but I'd be lying to you. Right. I, I've had days where, you know, I'm not at my best. And one of my goals um, every day is that every person I interact with that I'm their best interaction that day. That's a little goal I have. And I think that even if you don't accomplish it, but you, you strive for it, it can make a significant impact on the world. And I know it seems like a s simple thing, but when you, when you make someone's day better and they go on to make someone else's day better, uh, that that's a positive thing. And I always think about this, this term called the waiter rule. And I don't know if you've ever heard of this, the, the, the waiter rule, uh, thinking about this. And I'm probably partial to this because uh, my parents worked in the food industry and I saw people not treating them well, being rude to them and uh, talking to them like they're less than. And uh, I've had that happen to me. And I, like I said earlier, I can't say I've never done that myself, but the, the, the waiter rule is basically how do you... You can tell a lot about a person and the way that they interact with someone that, you know, is in a different profession, you know, maybe does a job um, that maybe others don't think that highly of. And I think that my parents had a huge impact on the world, not just on what people ate, but their interactions every single day, but they weren't always treated that way. And it tells you a lot. And I've had these conversations with people and, uh, I, I can lose attention really quick, it's something just who I am. And there's a difference between losing attention uh, because you struggle with paying attention to anything versus people looking for better conversations, looking for that person that maybe is that better conversation. And I always try to be really present, something I'm really working on and thinking about how people can make those interactions. I remember when I was uh, assistant principal and principal, I used to go to McDonald's um, probably once a week for breakfast. And I used to get like a egg McMuffin or whatever, uh, bacon and egg cheese bagel. If you don't have those, oh, they're so good, so good. And there was this um, person who worked at this, this McDonald's and she was always the one taking the order. And I'll tell you, every single time I interacted with her, she made my day better. She just made it incredible. And I think that when we think of that waiter rule, like how do you talk to people who you believe can't do anything for you? I think for me, what's really even more powerful is realizing that every person you interact with, doesn't matter their job, what they do, who they are, can make a positive difference on you if you go looking for it. And every time I talked to her, it wasn't like... I was, I'm not going to lie. I love that bacon, egg, cheese, bagel. So good. And that, you know, it gave me a little happiness right there. But every time I, I interacted with her, it was like getting a, a, a pep talk. It was like a motivational speech in 30 seconds or less. She just lifted me up every single interaction. And it's just, you know, looking for that interaction, looking for that. And I think this is something that I really appreciate when I have connected with so many people who, you know, have treated me really well. And, you know, I watch them treat others really well and make everyone feel one of the, the biggest uh, things that I think is really powerful that I see in other people that, you know, I aspire to is that they can make someone feel in one interaction that the whole world revolves around that person they're talking to. 
And so I just want you to think about that this week, how so many people are struggling, how many people are having a tough time. And the, the, the little interactions we have with strangers, whether it's in person, whether it's online, just taking that time to make sure that we acknowledge them, to make sure they feel um, you know, appreciated, whoever they are and whatever they do. Because I think that's one of the ways that make the world better. And when you'll see with my guests here, how I talk to them, how they lift me up. I'm just so blessed that I get to do this. I get to talk to people in all different facets of education. And just something I wanted you to think about as you listen to uh, this month's episode of the best of the Innovators Mindset podcast for September. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for all you do. Take care. Even now, when I talk, to, when I go back to schools or, or just pop in and say, hey, what? right now it's summer school, but I plan on coming back and showing my face a little bit. Mm-hmm. But um, even now, I always, the first thing I tell them is honesty. You have to be honest with yourself. And no one, no one knows who you are completely besides you. Mm-hmm. You can fake it. You can try to BS it. You can you can do all those things, and a lot. Of, I know a lot of people who got through high school BSing it, but it doesn't do you any good. You have to be honest with yourself and, and really sit down and ask yourself, okay, am I passing this class because I'm learning the curriculum, or am I just have, have I figured out a way to beat the system? Mm-hmm. And it's it's always nice to get a win, but it's it's better to win the war. Mm -hmm. I always say so winning the war is being honest with yourself and and really using those resources use your resources go to your teachers and be honest and upfront this is who I am this is how I learn and this is how I want to learn can we work on something can we can we implement a certain type of like lesson plan for just me and and others that learn just like me be honest and and -hmm. try to take those steps in the right direction towards actually learning instead of BSing and just getting through and getting by as well as do any and everything you can in high school like the extra curricular activities whether it's field trips or for me like I always had crazy opportunities like going to speak to other children whether they're in high school or whether they're in middle school or elementary school like just taking those taking advantage of those experiences because it makes it gives you a a new perspective on high school so try to change the perspective you currently have if it's not a positive one you know and just be just be yourself just be yourself but don't do it don't be yourself in in hopes of getting back at the system because it it hasn't done you right Mm -hmm. be yourself in hopes of beating the system because you know you can do it and you have the ability to do it. School isn't for everyone. The system isn't for everyone, but you have to do your part in order to change that. And you get you, you create the change by being honest and taking those opportunities to be a better student. It starts with us, honestly. My idea of serendipity is is really looking for serendipity in everything we experience. So from like joys beyond our imagination mm-hmm. to our deepest sorrows and then all the everyday things we go through in between, all of our experiences offer us beautiful gifts if mm-hmm. we look for them. So if you were to both look back at your careers and talk to yourself, you know, as first year teachers, what advice would you give to yourself? There's a moment that sticks out for me. Um, you know, my first year of teaching, I was teaching a fifth and sixth grade multi-age class. And uh, I love the kids, but my idea of success as a teacher was, um, you know, a quiet, controlled, calm class. Um, and I remember that one of my students, his name was Justin, and he told me, Mr. McKinney, like I was like getting on them one day about, you know, too much talking. He said, Mr. McKinney, we're not robots. And so, um, you know, a quiet classroom does not necessarily mean uh, an exciting, successful mm-hmm. learning classroom. And so that would be, you know, 
I didn't have to tell myself that as a teacher because my students did. And I'm <laughs> grateful for that. That's all. I'll always remember him. That's where, you get, that's where you get your best feedback, right? So I love that. Yes. Zach, what about you? Yeah. I would definitely build off of that and just say that school doesn't have to look the way it looked when you were a kid in mm -hmm. school. I think just, again, that deep connection and, and the willingness to sort of see me succeed. And I think that's a big part of being a great leader is, right. are you willing to sort of release the responsibility to the people who work with you and just see what they're capable of and then allow them that space to do what they need to do and, and show show what they're capable of? Because um, sometimes that can be tricky, you know, that can be tricky to release the reins. I was working hard and trying to figure out how to teach all these things and like not doing well like in that sel educator space at all and i didn't know what that meant right like we that was sel was not a thing back then mm -hmm. it was it was coming and uh, i remember uh a teacher at my school his name escapes me right now frank roffle frank roffle shout out to frank roffle <laughs> Shout out. Um, he called me out and he said, Brian, we need to go for coffee and we need to help figure out how to help you survive this thing for 18 mm. months. Wow. He goes, if you don't make 18 months, you're not going to make five years in this thing. And you, that's, then, that's pretty much going to be it. He says, like, that's my observation in the past, wow. the teachers that don't figure out how to cope. So my advice to new teachers and first year teachers is you should not do it all on mm -hmm. your own. Ask for help sooner than later. How can we actually honor educators right now? And I thought about talking about the teachers that really inspired me when I was a kid. My administrators that lifted me up, not only as a student, but as colleagues, right? And that's the same with teachers too, but also kind of help new people come into the profession. And so I came up with this idea uh, for the three questions. And ultimately, as I was going through that process, doing that podcast, and I started with myself first, and then I started interviewing people. But when I actually did it first... It was amazing because within one week, I talked about three teachers that inspired me. Uh, my kindergarten teacher from 40 years ago, uh, my grade three teacher who was also my music teacher, and my high school uh, football coach and my phys ed teacher. And I talked about each three, even though I was only supposed to talk about one, but I just couldn't because I've had access to many great educators. You know, as a student, I'm very lucky and very blessed for that as many students are. And what was amazing was they, they all responded to me in some way. Well, so one of the concepts that I talked about uh, from like one of the characteristics of the innovator's mindset is the notion of not only just problem solvers, right, but problem finders. And I think mm -hmm. that embodies that so beautifully, right? Because it's not like, mm -hmm. hey, kids, you should go figure this thing out that you might not care about. Right. So they, they actually have some personal connection to that. And uh, the story about the, the, the young woman in, in your class, you know, working with the curriculum, you know, focusing on black history. What I what I think is really amazing about that is as she's going through that process, um, 10 years from now, I don't know if people will know that she did that. But it's like that, but that, but that will be in there will be kind of her legacy. And it's just kind of interesting too. Like I always, I kind of think about that, that a lot of things that are in our schools, um, you know, maybe in, you know, and hopefully more positive than negative are, you know, the legacy of someone trying something different, someone pushing that and to give students that opportunity, right? Because a lot of times it's teachers, right? Like one of the things I'm proud of uh, is that I know in the school I was a principal at, if you go into the, the front, um, front hallway there's pictures of kids in that school to this day um that are updated all the time nobody knows i had any hand in that i don't care but it i know it actually changes the environment and i think that's something that's really and, and i think a lot of times we give educators that opportunity but having kids do that is really really incredible um, i'm going to ask you more about this in a second but i and i and i don't know how much you can say here too because i know there's a lot of uh so you do work with the local, the New Brunswick Teacher Association, like a local board, so not the, the provincial board. So you do that on a volunteer basis. Like how is that kind of balancing your work as the president of that, you know, versus teacher, especially, you know, not like, the, you know, not like anything has gone wrong in education the last couple of years. It's been pretty smooth sailing for everybody, right? Yeah. 
I know. Right? It's actually why I started the podcast, right? One of the reasons I started the podcast is was I wanted to, you know, have conversations with teachers and connect with this over, you know, to kind of help people out. But like, how, how do you balance that? Like, what, what's some of the things that you've had maybe to deal with that you can, you know, obviously that you can talk about? Um, how do I balance that? I, I think I try to balance it. I think what I try to do when we have mm-hmm. our rep, our branch rep meetings, that of course, we're all virtual last year. Right. Um, I try to give teachers an opportunity to express what they are feeling, but I also try to get them by the end of our meetings to try to focus on something that's really positive. Right. And I think that sometimes we, you know, there's a lot of issues in education. There's a lot of things that are out of our control, but I think a lot of what is in our control is how we look at things. And I think that sometimes, I think sometimes we have, I mean, trust me, the pandemic has not been fun. (laughs) <laughs> but I always what? try to look at What are you talking no, about? No, it hasn't been fun. Right. But I always try to look at it like, okay, but what what can we take out of mm-hmm. this situation? Like what are some of the positive of, of the situation? And some of the real positives out of this situation are we have teachers and students who are way more comfortable with technology because mm-hmm. they were forced right. to be more comfortable with technology. Yep. And they would not have been forced nope. um, otherwise. And I think that that's really... Uh, important. And I think that teachers need to remember uh, the impact that they have on students and that that's a privilege, that that is something that right. is a privilege, that we, you are able to have this impact on uh, these, who are, these, you know, these either tiny beings if right. you're in elementary, larger beings if you're in high school. I, I think that you need I, – I try to remind them the influence that they have. I think sometimes teachers think that they don't. I think they think that social media right. takes over, that the uh, that you know that influences from the outside take right. over. But I think that teachers need to be reminded that even in 2021 that their role is huge that you spend more time with that student than their own families spend time with that student. So what kind of impact do you want to have? And I, it, it, you know, I try to, and I try to, I guess I just try to bring, I'm a very glasses half full mm-hmm. kind of person. And sometimes annoyingly so I think <laughs> to some people, but I think that it's really important to focus on that because it's really easy to focus on all <sighs> of the issues that are, we really don't have control over. So that's so, what I, how uh, I try to balance it. So I, I really appreciate what you're saying. And I, I get accused of being overly positive too. I, I'm, I don't, I'm actually quite a cynical, grumpy person. If you <laughs> want me to be honest grumpy with you. Smurf. Yeah, I'm grumpy Smurf on most days, sometimes <laughs> brainy Smurf. Right. But the, <laughs> the reality of that is, um, I, I'm always looking for solutions, which is beautiful to what you're actually talking about um, with your, like kind of the intersection of what you do with your students and kind of your viewpoint on, on how you, you know, lead as a president. And one of the things, and this is, this is ego driven. I'm not going to lie to you. Right. I, when people are like, Oh, the system, the system. And I'm like, well, you know, like the system is actually made up of people and this is where the ego comes in. I actually feel like I can do a lot of things to actually move stuff forward and push people in certain ways and actually like challenge things right away and not just say like, Oh, like some force is actually not allowing us to do this. Like people are making these decisions. So as a person that's involved in this system, I actually can do things as well. And I remember, um, you know, I was, I was really, I remember like, and just, I'm trying to think of like, what's an example of this. I remember actually years ago, um, when, just kind of looking at something we were doing in our school that was like kind of just inherited passed down was a process that we had. This is going to seem like such a a little thing, but to me it was kind of a big thing, right? So we had these agendas, you know, like the agenda is like every kid is like the school logo and stuff like that. And you like, write, And it's like such a like badge Mm -hmm. of honor for a lot of our kids. So it was basically saying that, so it was passed down um, that if, uh, school, teachers didn't or if parents didn't pay the fees of the school kid can get their agenda and so like that was like so it was like 10 bucks right 
So you couldn't get this done. So I like remember walking into a classroom and seeing like, hey, um, I'm not, well, how come a bunch of kids don't have their agendas? Oh, you know, like that's just something the school does. Like, you know, the school, right? The school, right? I'm like, well, this, like the school doesn't make the decisions, right? The people in the school make the decisions, right? The school, um, you know, historically basically doesn't give kids their agendas because then it's like impossible to get, you know, the fees out of the parents. I'm like, so basically I can identify what families are struggling by who doesn't have an agenda. It's basically what I can tell. I can walk in yeah. and physically see it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. no, nah, that's not happening anymore. Give the kids their agendas. And if a family will work with the families to try to figure out their fees and stuff like that. And if worst case scenario that they don't pay their fees, I guess we're out 10 bucks per kid who couldn't pay for it. And I, I honestly, I, I, and this is where the overly optimistic thing is. I believe that I just kind of believe if a, if a family could, they would they would pay it. Right. And I think, so I was like, so that, that was, that was done. And that was not, and I was like, that was like, kind of believe like that was a, 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 a school decision. I'm like, nope, that's wrong. We're not doing that. So that as a person, I challenge that. So what I found was with each new step, I had to, uh, one of the things I had talked about in that TEDx talk was learning to to let go, to kind of clear my mm-hmm. plate of certain things to let new things in. And that was a piece that I'm like, all right, what am I willing to let go for this next thing to begin? So I finally said, like, I, I have to let go of my that lead pathway that has been my true baby for the last mm-hmm. 10 years. And it's going to be okay. Like I watched somebody else. I helped my student teacher teach in it this last year. I'm going to support the next person and train them well and like support them through that journey. I wrote a whole, I haven't talked about it yet. I haven't shared it on social media, but I wrote a whole letter that I put up um, that I'm going to share soon enough uh, for the next person to my classroom before I need to be fired. And I just said to the next person who is going to be in this sacred space. And it's a three page, like long thing about all the great things that they're going to be coming into and how I wish them well. And like, that is my hope is that I leave a space better than I began and that I don't ever leave a space with a hole. Like I Mm -hmm. really want it to be that a space doesn't revolve around me, Mm -hmm. that I help it to be a space that becomes a great space because I connect with people, I do things and I work in my own way. And so that's, that's really what I'm hoping. Everything we talked about, I would spin it into things that were important to me. I would play music in class that, that I liked. Mm -hmm. It was never about the kids. I thought the kids will like what I like, but Mm-hmm. I wish I would have done more that what interested them. Right. Uh, and I just didn't. One more thing on that is I think in college I was taught that keep your distance from students. Like don't get too close to them. Don't be too friendly because when you're a high school teacher, there's only that few years of separation. So I also feel like I avoided some of those real in-depth get to know you conversations right. because that's the way I was taught and that's what was modeled. And it took me a while to figure out that that maybe wasn't the best advice.